Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cardiovascular system. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the nitric oxide synthase enzymes in more detail than we've ever talked about them before. So this is going to be on the nitric oxide synthase enzymes. So we are going to look at the structure of a nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Uh, we will look at the three different types of nitric oxide synthase enzymes. Uh, we'll look at um, how they are activated, and in the case of two of them, NOS1 and NOS2, um, sorry, NOS1 and NOS3, they're going to be calcium calmodulin dependent uh, or calcium dependent. And the third, uh, third one, NOS2, uh, is going to be calcium independent. Uh, then what we'll look at is the reaction that they catalyze. Okay, and how their structure relates to that function. Right, so uh, let's start off with talking about uh, the three different types of NOS enzyme. So, there are three isoforms of nitric oxide synthase. And nitric oxide synthase, by the way, is often abbreviated to NOS. So there is NOS1, okay, the old name for which is NOS. Uh, which stands for neuronal nitric oxide synthase, so this is neuronal NOS. And that is the nitric oxide synthase that is often found in uh, the axon terminal of neurons. Okay, uh, then there is NOS2, okay, nitric oxide synthase 2, uh, the other name for which is INOS, okay, which stands for inducible NOS. This is the nitric oxide um, synthase which is turned on inside of macrophages uh, when they, well, is the expression of which is increased inside macrophages uh, when they uh, become activated. So that's why it's called inducible NOS. It's very much so related to the inflammatory response. Okay, so this one is... Um, involved in the inflammatory response and it's turned on inside macrophages uh, when they become activated. And then finally, there is NOS3 here, uh, which is also known as ENOS, which stands for endothelial NOS. And it's the one um, which is constitutively expressed inside endothelial cells uh, and uh, is involved in endothelium-derived relaxation of the smooth muscle uh, lining the endothelium of blood vessels. Okay, right. So, uh, now what I want to talk about is the actual structure of these proteins and how they form functional enzymes which are going to create uh, nitric oxide. Okay, right. So, let's look at the basic structure of these proteins then. So, they have two domains. Well, firstly, let's Let's talk about them as a polypeptide, because that's what they are, after all. They are a great long sequence of amino acids. So I'm going to show them as a polypeptide, as a sequence of amino acids. Now, I'm not going to draw out every single amino acid, because they are very, very long proteins. Uh, but um, I'm going to draw out major regions. So the, the first region at the amino terminus over here, okay, is something known as the oxygenase domain, okay? So at the amino terminus of each one of these proteins, you have uh, a domain known as the oxygenase domain. Okay, and we'll see what this binds to later. So for now, we'll denote this in blue, basically. Okay, now the other the other major domain is something known as a reductase domain, but it's split into a lot of bits. Uh, well, it's, we're going to split it up into a lot of uh, smaller bits because um, because they're interesting. Well, they're, they're going to be interesting as far as function are concerned. So there is this linker between the oxygenase and the reductase domain, and this linker here contains the calmodulin binding site. So we'll talk about that more in a moment. So this is the calmodulin binding site. And it's a linker, basically, between the oxygenase domain and the reductase domain. So this is the calmodulin binding site. OK, and I'll note this in pink. So the calmodulin binding site in pink there. Right, the next structure you have is half of what is known as the flavin mononucleotide uh, binding domain. 
So I'll draw the other half. Now, this is where it alternates between uh, the calcium independent ones and the calcium, sorry, the calcium independent one, lost two, and the calcium dependent one. So I should just group those together. So these two, in order for them to actually work, they need calcium to be elevated in the cell cytoplasm. So these are calcium dependent. Okay, whereas uh, the NOS2, which I've already uh, coloured in this pink colour, so we might as well keep that NOS2, or this inducible NOS, it's calcium independent. So if you make NOS2, then it will start synthesising nitric oxide, whether or not there is calcium present at an elevated level inside the cytoplasm. Okay, right, so I will colour in the calcium dependent um, nosses in this green colour. So we we'll use green to denote the calcium dependent nosses. Now, in the case of the calcium dependent nosses, you have a very important loop here. Okay, so I'll show this the loop. And in the case of the calcium independent NOS, the NOS2, this loop is not present. So this green loop is something that's present in NOS1 and NOS3, but not NOS2. So in NOS2, it would just go like this, basically. <laughs> you wouldn't have a loop. Okay, so this is what you have in NOS2. Okay, and then on the other side of this loop, or this uh, non-loop, as it may be in the case of NOS2, you have the other half of the flavin mononucleotide binding domain. Okay, so these t regions in turquoise here are going to dimerize, basically. They're half of one unit, so that's why this becomes a loop, because those two are going to come together, basically. Okay, and they together will form the flavin mononucleotide binding domain. So you don't have two binding sites for flavin mononucleotide. You have one, it's just there are two halves of this binding site. So this is the flavin, flavin mononucleotide binding site. And we'll see how flavin mononucleotide uh, is important later. Flavin mononucleotide binding domains. Okay, and they're half of the binding domain, so you do not, I'll repeat this again, you do not have two separate binding sites for flavin mononucleotide. Each one of these uh, makes up half of it. They're going to dimerize together, and that dimer will then have a binding site for flavin mononucleotide, which, by the way, is often abbreviated to FMN. Okay, right. Now, the next domain, unfortunately, we've run out of space, uh, so we'll have to sort of go down here, which is kind of awkward. Uh, but the next domain then has two important binding sites in here as well. So I'll do it nice and fixed so that I can write on where these binding sites are. So you have a binding site for FAD, which is the same FAD that you know from the respiration pathways. And again, you have a binding site for NADPH. OK, right, so these are these two binding sites. Right, so uh, let me colour in this portion. We'll have this portion in um, what colour? Uh, pink, if we use pink. No, we haven't used red. We'll use red. Okay, so in red, we then have this final bit of the enzyme down here. Well, this isn't the enzyme yet. This is the protein. Okay, so NOS1, NOS2, and NOS3 are proteins, basically. They are polypeptides. What we're going to actually see is to get a functional enzyme which is going to make nitric oxide, you need to dimerize these proteins together, but we'll see that in a moment. And at the bottom here, you then have a carboxylic acid group. So that's the uh, carboxyl terminus of the polypeptide. So here we go. We go along this polypeptide, and this overall is the different sites that you have along the polypeptide. Right, so uh, this is the flavin adenine dinucleotide binding site, so I will label that up as well. So this FAD portion here stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide, okay, which is an important uh, molecule that can be reduced, basically, nucleotide uh, binding domain. Okay, and then uh, this NADPH here stands for the reduced NADP or reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide um, binding domain here. So down here we have 
uh, the reduced nicotinamide, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide binding domain. Adenine dinucleotide binding domain. Okay, right. Now, um, the entire portion of this polypeptide from these uh, flavin mononucleotide binding, well, these two portions that are going to make up the flavin mononucleotide binding uh, site, uh, all the way down to this uh, NADPH uh, binding domain, all of that is then known as the um, is then known as the um, the reductase domain. So this was the oxygenase domain over here, and all of this from here. And how am I going to highlight this up? Here, all of this here. Let me just outline this entire thing. Okay. All of this, this is the reductase domain here. So we have these two domains, these oxygenase, this oxygenase domain and this reductase domain over here. So let me label this up. So that's why the correct name for this enzyme nitric oxide synthase uh, is actually an oxidoreductase. It's not a synthase enzyme at all. It's actually an oxidoreductase. So they, these are proteins which are, oh, whoops, what am I doing? Q. Uh, these proteins uh, which uh, we're going to use to make nitric oxide synthase enzymes, uh, well, we're going to use to make enzymes which are going to produce nitric oxide, they are actually oxidoreductases. Okay, so I want to stress these three things, NOS1, NOS2, NOS3, they are proteins. They are genes which then go for proteins like so. Now, what happens is in order to create a functional enzyme, you have to take two of these and dimerize them together. And luckily, it's quite simple. They only ever form homodimers. They don't form heterodimers, i.e. you do not take a NOS1 protein and dimerize it with a NOS2 protein, no. You only dimerize NOS1 with another NOS1 protein, and that's why people refer to a NOS1 enzyme, because that just means the enzyme made out of two NOS1 proteins, basically. Similarly, NOS2 enzyme will mean take two of these proteins where you've got NOS2, in which case you don't have this green loop here, you have a much shorter uh, linker region between these two halves of the flavin mononucleotide binding site. Um, and uh, you dimerize those together to make a homodimer, and that will be your NOS2 enzyme, and similarly with NOS3 two NOS3 proteins dimerized together to make a NOS3 enzyme. But we'll discuss that dimerization in the next video.